And hello, everyone. There it was. There was our audio issue for the night. Uh, normally, I do the Ooh. opening credit sequence, but tonight I'm just moving right in because we have a lot to talk about this Saturday night. It is October 17th. It is the new fall season. We've got a lot on the docket, but uh, I am joined tonight, as usual, by John and Steve. Welcome, everyone. How has your week been? So good so far, I think. I'm still here. Nice. Still have a pulse. Good. Good. <laughs> went good. I was just going to say, I'm, I'm still waking up in the morning, so that's always good. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, got a chance to watch some anime. More, I, I actually watched more anime than I thought I would mm. uh, this week, especially in the concentrated amount of time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you guys I... went the, went the Hercules route for the season openers. <laughs> yeah. Like, holy. Yeah, Steve and I um, spent nine hours straight watching anime today. Um, all <sighs> the first episodes that we could catch. Um, there are a few that we missed, uh, I know. But that is that is just the life of, of watching anime these days. There's just too much. I, I have I have accepted the fact that I've ruined one of my corneas and I have a uh, you know totally blind in one eye at this point. I'll get better. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Um, Wait yeah. a minute! Don't, didn't they at the beginning of your guys' uh, session wasn't there a little placard that came up and said, "Please stay at least two feet away from the, from the TV screen"? <laughs> oh, Pokemon damn, thing again! Up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like... Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, Andrew Jackson is asking in the chat room, best Gundam series? That's a good question. Um, All of them. Or yeah. in the pocket. <laughs> mm. Or in the pocket. Original Gundam. See, I will argue yeah. that, the, that the, well, I don't know. Um, I normally recommend War in the Pocket for folks who have had some exposure to Gundam. I think it works best if you're more familiar mm. with the Gundam universe first. That is true. Um, um, but the, if, if you do, then yeah, it's a high watermark. <laughs> Um, so it's not like you know necessarily the first Gundam, but it, it, yeah, um, best Gundam series. Other words, yeah, Eighth MS team is good. It's pretty, um, yeah, it's pretty good. It, it's it's and Eighth MS team is, is like it hits all the boxes. It hits all the boxes, which has the advantage. Like it has all the different pieces you'd want. Um, but yeah, I can't I can't really narrow it down to a single best. I will. I mean, I have an undying love for Gundam Wing, but that is a freaking weird series. Um, yeah, it's so totally I, different. So I can't how about really... how about the Hello Kitty Gundam crossover? Is Clearly, that the best, best one Gundam. ever. Clearly, no uh, question. I, oh my god, I want one of those. Take my money. All right. <laughs> well, you know, Steve, the, I I heard about it recently. It's only it's just it's just really very very new. They call it, I believe, the interweb or hmm. netweave or something. Maybe it's the something internet. Like Maybe yeah. it's the internet. Maybe that's the thing that it, you could find that. that I thing. Can feel it credit card number maybe i believe or, or a money order i see yes <laughs> i think it's made of tubes yes mm -hmm. tubes. tubes all right all right all right duly noted thank you yeah and that's um, that's at least what amazon's trying to make it like so that you order it you order it and then 10 seconds later <laughs> there's the package like <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they're installing vacuum tubes in my building like like, like the, the the you know the yeah. ones from like uh, right. yep <laughs> God. It's like the old bank, uh, the yeah. uh, drive-up banking windows. You yep. put the tube, <laughs> down it goes. Woo, cool. It is. Um, uh, didn't they have those in, in the Metropolis, like the, the original uh, 1933 film? They did, yeah. Yeah, they, they use those tubes for yeah. that. It's really cool. That's good. Um, so let's see here. Um, yes, it has been a thing. Um, what's the alternate universe? Fair, nothing wrong. Uh, yeah, Wing is freaking strange, but I love it. And that's just the way, the way it is, you know. Um, it, it is kind of indescribably weird. I remember uh, she, uh, watching the first episode of that, that with a friend, and just you know, him kind of bursting out laughing at moments, enjoying it, but just like, what? Like, why? Why did that character do that thing for that person? You'll, mm -hmm. um, it will, it will all be explained. It might not make sense, but it'll all be explained eventually. But you were entertained. Um, yes. You were entertained. Were we, were we not entertained? It also doesn't help when your writing staff leaves halfway through the show. That causes issues. Yeah. Um, that's just an inconvenience. It's true. If anything, yeah. that's a budget savings. Mm -hmm. Think of how much more money they made. Right. Exactly. More shows should do that. <laughs> Wait, no. Modern problems <laughs> require modern solutions. Exactly. <laughs> 
Um, so as we mentioned, it is October. It is time for the new fall season. And so what do you guys think? Exactly. Um, <laughs> should we do the news or should we talk about the shows of the season first? What do you think we should, should lead with? Um, There's nine hours of shows to discuss. So it's true. I, I, I would say news probably be the more condensed and very finite mm. thing that to talk about versus mm. all of the new shows that are that'll probably take off in like an hour. Or that, more. that that is fair. Right. So let, let's let's yeah. get to the news. There there are a few things to talk about this week. Um, and it's fun. Do you hear that? <laughs> and welcome back to the latest anime news for the week ending October 17th, 2020. Let's get right into it. Um, the Slice of Life horror manga Shadow House released its sixth compiled volume this week and announced that a television anime adaptation is in the works. It was also revealed that the October 29th issue of Weekly Young Jump will publish a teaser visual for the new anime, if you're curious. Uh, this was created by two-person team Somato, and the story takes place in a large Western-style mansion, as all creepy stories should, uh, where a family of aristocratic, faceless shadow people live, uh, uh, live there. It follows their attendants, who are living dolls modeled after the family members, who are both servants and stand-in faces for their masters, the manga follows the daily lives of these characters and gradually reveals the mysteries and horrors they hold. It launched Weekly Young Jump back in 2018. I gotta say, you know, what more appropriate news story for the season than that concept? Ugh. Yeah, yeah that's pretty creepy. That's, creepy that's creepy like dolls. A, yeah. Aww. Creepy dolls. Mm -hmm. I can see hey, creepy hey, dolls hey, with hey, a faceless hey, attendant. Yeah. Like, I have a story to show you. Such sights to show you. Mitrashai, mitrashai, yes. yami shibai no jikan da yo. And it sounds like a premise that could kind of go in a lot of places, a lot of different stories they could tell with that. Um, so definitely looking forward to seeing what, what, what goes, uh, uh, goes on with that. Um, I wonder how long the teaser is going to be. What, yeah. Five minute teaser or well, like literally 30 seconds. Well, th this is in the magazine. So I think it's just going to be a, a teaser visual. Oh yeah. Okay. I suspect. Dang. Um, I was hoping for like a teaser, a little yeah. bit of like, get a flavor for it. Be like, <laughs> eh, is this something I'm going to go for? Or is this yeah. going to be something too weird for me? So <laughs> hopefully I'm, I'm sure there are scans of it online of the manga so we can get a feel of that. Yeah. Too. Um, so we will see. Not the only new anime announced this week. Uh, from Slice of Life to Horror, from some Slice of Life Horror to Horror Turn Slice of Life, it was announced this week that Masaya uh, Hokozano's Kichikujima manga is getting a comedy short anime spin off titled Kaoru's Precious Thing. The one minute episodes will premiere weekly starting on November 18th. The original manga tells the story of a group of students trapped on a deserted island with a brutal killer. The spin off, however, will put the characters in. Relaxing slice of life situations. We were talking about this the other day, a little bit earlier. That I think, you know, if something's popular, what happens? We get more of it. And I think that's clearly the, the message here yeah. is that, okay, slice of life thing? Sure. Let's see how that works. Was that Charles the Manson the there thing. on the uh, <laughs> yeah, right. pig? And the pig is supposed to be pigs from the Tate LaBianca murders and Helter Skelter? Is sure. that what I'm supposed to get out of that image? I'm sure. Yeah, so, definitely. So it's titled Kaoru's Precious Thing? Kaoru's Precious Thing. Mean? And is it supposed to be kind of a joke to have a horror slasher uh, anime do a slice of life? I'm sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Ha <laughs> 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 ha, brilliant of you people, brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um, from anime back to manga, 
Three established creators announced this week they're preparing new manga, a potential interest to our viewers. First up, this week's issue of Weekly Shonen Magazine announced that Fujino Omori, writer of the ever-popular Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon, will launch a new dungeon fantasy manga starting in December titled The Wistoria of Staves and Swords. The manga will be serialized in Kodansha's Besatsu Shonen Magazine with art by Toshi Aoi. Um, Aoi posted teaser illustrations on Twitter after the announcements seen on screen now. Uh, this week's issue of Shueisha's Besatsu Margaret magazine also announced two upcoming manga. First, a new short manga series from My Love Story and Ozora Yell's Kazune Yawahara, sorry, Kawahara. Uh, the manga will be titled Much Ado About Nothing, a reference, of course, to the Shakespeare play of the same name, and will also debut in December. Kawahara's previous manga, Where's My Lovely Sweetheart, launched back in 2016 and just ended. A second, and second, a new manga from Iyo Sakisaka, creator of Blue Spring Ride and Love Me, Love Me Not. This new series doesn't have a title announced yet, but it's set to debut sometime in early spring of next year. So it's just always good to see new manga on the horizon. Um, I don't know if you guys... Have well, it's also, it's also new manga from, from series mm. that the animes I adored. Yeah. You know? Mm. Yeah. So it's like Don, Don Machi, My Love Story... Um, uh oh gosh what was the other one blue spring ride right. mm. it's like oh you know these were good shows mm. <laughs> so hopefully mm -hmm. this will then now get more of that franchise going along so yeah let's see yeah always always good to see some some more stuff going yeah on. um uh also some some more uh manga news this week uh several manga magazines announced upcoming one shots this week, along with the typical standalone stories, Weekly Shonen Magazine revealed this week that five manga authors will all be publishing one-shots themed around isekai versions of their own original manga. The first of the one-shots was published this week from Reiji Miyajima's Rent-A-Girlfriend with the excellent title Reincarnate a Girlfriend. The other one-shots will debut in the magazine one at a time. The next one based on Senryu Girl, after that will be Domestic Girlfriend, Boarding School Juliet, and finally Hitman. It'll be interesting to see how their creators translate these characters in an isekai setting, and also to wonder what other series might get isekai because, my goodness, we can't go three days without a new isekai thing. Not that I'm complaining, <laughs> um, but uh, isekai is definitely the, still the, the hot thing. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, that's... I was just going to say that there's never enough isekai. Yeah. Know, I mean, Apparently not. Yeah. <laughs> Reincarnate a girlfriend as much as you can. <laughs> but however, I do like the the title "Reincarnate a Girlfriend." I do, I love that it. Sound it's great. That <laughs> sounds kind of interesting. So let me ask you all: um, What series would you like to see an isekai? Would you like to see their characters isekai'd, change and move to a different uh, world or dimension, or or reality? Because um, I know I want to see Goku in the modern world. I want to see Goku in, you know, 20th century New York. New York City. Wow. So many F-bombs in that one. Wow. <laughs> he's going to get so many F-bombs. And he's going to fight a pizza rat? I mean... <laughs> Oh my god, Goku in New York. Yeah, just like so many isekais as it is, it would be like, <laughs> okay, I guess I'd have to think of all the isekais I like and turn it into a regular slice of life. In which case, I think most of them would be really boring if there wasn't like some kind of sword fighting and magic. It's like, okay, now you don't have your smartphone in, a, in another mm. world. You're just in class and you're trying to decide whether you should join the soft tennis club or just go home. <laughs> Like, okay, I, I have watched those shows, too, and they don't really rain all that great. So. Yeah. Um, hmm. Actually, come to that, I, you know, that's a good idea. I think sports characters would do well in a Sakai series, right? Because they're always the ones yeah. that are, you know, pushing forward and always getting better. So I think just Isekai series, is, it's natural, right? They'll just, they'll be fine. Um, you know, you, you need, like... Uh, um, I don't know. It's 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 weird. You know, you, you need a character that's not particularly um, remarkable, but that is also the trope of Isekai. So I don't know quite how you would twist that around. It's odd. Ashta no Joe in Dead Space. There we go. <laughs> I'm all for that. Um, Just drag that out of there. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, now a follow-up to a news story from previously. It was previously announced that the first new Harvey Suzumiya novel in nine and a half years will debut on November 25th, and the English version will release digitally on that day as well. But a release date for the translated print version was still unknown. This week, this week brings us news um, that international fans uh, can now start planning their trip to the bookstore. Yen Press will release the print version of The Intuition of Harvey Suzumiya in print in June of 2021. So we have a little ways to wait on that one. Um, the company also revealed they'll be re-releasing all the Harvey Suzumiya light novels under their Yen On imprint starting in January, releasing two a month through May. These will be paperback volumes featuring the original Japanese cover art from illustrator Noizi Ito, whereas the original releases were sort of minimalistic covers um, to be a little more you know, simplified and a little more uh, um, you know, less manga-y, anime-y in the bookstores. Um, so yes, print version coming quite a while after digital release. Eight months. Yeah. 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 Do we think this is going to be wow. a trend? Well, at least it's going to give me time to watch it. Mm -hmm. I'm probably like the last human anime <laughs> fan to watch this series, but mm -hmm. you've not seen any of it. None, no Haruhi at all. I've only seen clips. I've okay. only seen clips. No full episodes. Oh. Most of what I've seen comes from AMVs. You're in for a treat. Wow. Yep. Yeah. You you could you could keep your status. And never watch it and be the last human being on earth who's <laughs> never seen anything horror mm -hmm. like you know full horror hit. come on yeah mm -hmm. um yeah broadcast order that's all i gotta say but yeah um i wonder though if i mean it would it kind of makes sense to me if you had the digital files you know setting up for print takes time um, yeah making all those processes take time so just release it digitally and then whenever you're ready for it physically it it would really you know speed up release uh you know release dates uh, yeah. it kind of makes sense wasn't you know the the miracle of the digital age doesn't that make the print process at least somewhat faster mm. you know what i mean you're not having to type you know move physically moving types well, yeah. around on big sheet boards and mm -hmm. printing like you know yeah. ben franklin yeah so but I mean, I think that went out in the '80s, right? So I was gonna say, so now it should be—I mean, eight months to get to a physical print. Shouldn't it be something like a month or two just to, you know, get it? I don't, I don't, I don't even know what the printing software must look like to get it to the actual book phase. Well, it, it's the thing yeah. is, is not even that. Um, it is, it is all of the physical processes of reserving space on the printing machines. Mm -hmm. You know, getting all of that stuff done. The, just the yeah, it, you have to schedule them. You have to oh, be, try to get it in the queue. Yeah, get in the right. queue, and and then getting the templates to to run it onto the actual rollers. And from mm -hmm. what I understand, I, the problem is there are fewer and fewer physical book publishers these days, in the sense of yeah. that own the I, physical machines. Um, so it's just harder, mm -hmm. and you know you're on a, a longer queue and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, because um, you're right. I think you know, the digital yeah. process makes that you know you kind of have the file, you flow it onto 200 pages, and you're done. Yeah, uh, pretty much. But but you need somebody who's like, yeah, I've got like three thousand other books right before yeah. you. So mm -hmm. <laughs> back when there was newspapers in every town, we had printing options. Exactly. And now <laughs> there's like five there's of us who do this in the entire country. I wonder how yeah. cheap it would be to buy a printing press now. I wonder if those are cheap now. Everyone's getting rid I mean, of them. as in like the things that are the size of an entire house. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm not talking a hundred bucks. I mean, right? But I'm yeah, saying, I was gonna say cheap by like to... what a million dollars versus like fifty. Yeah, yeah I guess <laughs> you get a bargain if you get a small, be a small print like an Okidata, um eighty. You get it, it'll be about two or three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And what but small that's, mean? But that the size of a car garage small, or. What? <laughs> uh, small is about 400 pounds. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be about kind of hard to gauge because we're doing it on video, mm -hmm. but it's it's basically something like that's going to be about um, three foot wide, three three and a half to four feet wide. It's going to be about four feet tall, mm -hmm. um, and it's it has multiple. Oh, wow. I used to work in a print shop, mm -hmm. um, and it has multiple rollers. But it's not just the press itself. You have to. Mm -hmm 
print the template to put on the rollers to print it out. Uh, hey man, I thought you said so... you worked at Kinko's. <laughs> Kinko's, hey. Kinko's. Hey. Hey. <laughs> the now defunct Anderson Printing is where hey. I used to work. Uh, many, 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 many years ago. And I'm and just hence, getting the ink hence, out of my... That's our discussion oh, about now imagine. the number of people who can print things. Yeah. <laughs> now defunct. Yeah. Wow. I, I'm looking on eBay now for printing presses. Um, uh, oh, yeah, there, well, well, wow. There is a, um, a 1650, that's the model number, XE Multigraphics Printing Press for um, only $1,000, but it looks like it is being sold as is. It's basically, yeah. uh, you know, it exists. Oh. We have no idea of the condition of it. By the way, it's like Family. a Jaguar. You you have mm -hmm. to have your own mechanic. You have to buy the mechanic along yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah. You know? um, so well, that the is printing press. Up. The bonus is it comes with its own family of possums that lives inside. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> uh -huh. um, so it's a win-win for everybody. <laughs> right. Totally. Um, that would be kind of cool. You know, walking to somebody's house. Oh yeah, printing press. Um, <laughs> walk into their house, be like the block away from their house where you just hear this that sound. <laughs> oh, it's an industrial printing press. Do I like it? <laughs> Giant diesel generator for it's not loud at all. <laughs> uh, just to get off topic for a second, there's a scene in um, Dr. Strangelove where um, um, I think it's Peter Sellers uh, is in a big uh, computer uh, you know, room, and he's standing next to some uh, uh, machine that's running and talking to somebody else. And it's one of the kind of goofs of the movie because if that machine is running, it is loud enough you cannot talk. Like, right. It is just incredibly <laughs> loud. So, okay, they clearly like dubbed that in or whatever. Yeah. Um, this is one of those little things about movie, movie magic. Speaking of movie magic and technology... Um, masks have certainly become an integral part of our daily lives this year, but wearing a mask all the time does make it difficult to express your emotions properly through this face thing. Fortunately, the Hirata Takagawa Lab is developing a product that could assist with that, and with quite a few other applications, at least according to its creators, the E2 Mask Z, or Z, uses facial scanners and AI to read its viewers' facial expressions and then portrays them on the external screen through a cute anime girl, or presumably whatever, whatever avatar you want, but who wouldn't want a cute anime girl, with the, girl, with the goal to, quote, support augmented face-to-face -face communication in real environments, end quote, rather than just online. As described by the official site, and I quote, the thin wearable facial expression recognition system, I think thin is relative here, was implemented with photoreflective sensor arrays, which can measure uh, facial expressions at 40 feature points distributed across an entire face. The trained model achieved an average accuracy of 79% when identifying the facial expressions of multiple users. Uh, user experiments indicated that the proposed thin digital full face mask display allows the wearer to control the facial expression of the avatar with a fast response rate and create a positive sense of self-agency and self-ownership toward the augmented avatar face, end quote. The space below the screen is made of see-through cloth, so the contraption is theoretically safe to wear while out and about. The developers expressed a number of different functions the mask could have, including helping calm children who are looking up at the dentist. Yeah. Um, being worn by people at parties or actors at, in theatrical plays, or even folks in job interviews. Hopefully the design will be a bit more streamlined before that official release. Because, yeah, oh <laughs> go to a job interview wearing that. <laughs> I'm going to go, uh, yeah, I'm going to get uh, Renge from Non Non Bury, and I'm going to go, and then I'm going to go in there. <laughs> yes, I'm a professional, blah, 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 blah. And they're going to be like, why do you have a, like a little tiny, like, 10 year old girl on your face mask? <laughs> Technology. That's... I just, I just want one. To wear at Thanksgiving dinner just to throw everybody off. <laughs> It'd be even better if you could find somebody to wear it for you. Yeah, there we go. And then <laughs> and they're like, "Hey, Steve, how you doing? What's up?" And you're, the whole thing's doing its thing, and then you walk in through the door and be like, "Who the hell's that?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <There's your laughs> oh no! I want one. I, I mm -hmm. it's stupid as all hell. Yeah, I want one, and oh, I know it's probably going to be like a thousand bucks, but oh, just you know. Yep. 
that oh that'd be just really cool <laughs> because I would I'd put Renge on there mm-hmm. and just go out and have Renge or or uh, Kana mm-hmm. from Miss Kobayashi's Dragon mm-hmm. Maid and just have Kana talking and be like yes. <laughs> yep throw people off you know with my actually I'll just pitch my voice lower with with her face <laughs> on me like, right, thanks thanks for having me for the interview today I, I'm looking forward to. Uh, Working as a lawyer for your firm, yes, thank you very much. My specialties are environmental law and I want to uh, see and uh, child, <laughs> child custody cases. Okay. I want to see the child that is calmed looking up at a dentist with one of these masks on. <laughs> and then watch them. They scream at the TV when the anime comes on later and go, what? Son, why are you screaming at the TV? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Gundam hurt me. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. what? What, are you, what are you talking about? It shot me in the mouth. What are you saying? Now, 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 kids, don't worry. A professional in a Gundam talking mask is still a professional. <laughs> there we are. They're lying. <laughs> Accidentally start streaming Parasite the Maximum on it, (laughs) popping over to eating things. You're like, "Uh, Doctor, Doctor, don't do that. What? Oh, streaming the wrong thing. I'm sorry. Uh, Legend of the Overfiend? No, no. Um, Also, this week, Kodansha Comics announced it will uh, begin releasing its Simopub manga on the Comixology service starting this month. New chapters will release on Comixology the same day as they release on Kodansha's other partner manga services. That's pretty quick. In addition, subscribers to Comixology Unlimited can uh, now read more manga from Kodansha Comics without any additional cost. Kodansha also releases its simulpub, its simulpub, man, its simulpub manga titles on Crunchyroll, Bookwalker, and Amazon Kindle, although not every title is available through Crunchyroll or Bookwalker. Prolific composer Kyohei Tsutsumi has passed away at, at 80 years old. As well as writing songs for rock bands and idols, Tsutsumi composed theme songs for a number of anime, including the theme for the longest-running animated series of all time, says i He also composed theme songs for anime such as Castle in the Sky, Heaven's Lost Property, and Tokyo Pig, and the opening and ending theme songs for the Transformers TV anime series. Finally, manga creator Izumi Matsumoto, creator of Kimiguri Orange Road, also passed away recently at only 61 years old. He had been suffering from illness in the spine and cerebral fluid for many years, having to take several long breaks from working, but never giving up his desire to continue creating manga. He published the Kimiguri Orange Road manga from 84 through 87, which inspired a TV series, two anime films, and various anime videos. Rest in peace. Indeed. Yeah. Always sad to see folks uh, pass and and move along, um, but worth commemorating um, and celebrating their accomplishments. The joy that they have brought us all in in our fandom for all these years. Yeah, absolutely. 